Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our weekday family devotions. We're glad you're here. Let's pray together uh, on this uh, on this Thursday and ask the Lord to bless our time. <clears throat> excuse me, as we gather here and study the Word of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day you've given us, and Lord, our prayer is that you'd help us understand the truth of the Word and rightly apply it to our lives, rightly uh, divide it, rightly apply it, and so that we could live uh, better for you, Lord, and that you'd send us revival as a prayer that we have and we've been continuing to make, Lord, that you'd transform our hearts and lives, help us be more like Christ, and Lord, help us walk in obedience to the truth of your word. But Lord, bless this time we have today and use it for your glory in our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good afternoon, everyone. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of James, James chapter 3, as we come again to the word of God. And may the Lord help us um, understand uh, the, the, the responsibility we have before God concerning our speech the last, last uh, time we met, we looked in verses, uh, verses uh, 1 through 8. And here we're going to begin in verse number 9. Notice what the Bible says in James chapter 3, beginning in verse 9, speaking about the tongue. says, Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing, my brethren, these things ought not so to be. Uh, doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, uh, my brethren, bear olive berries, either the vine figs? Uh, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. And we look here, and we look back in verse number 9. It says, Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of God. It doesn't make any sense, does it? Uh, I, we, we come to church and we worship the Lord, right? We sing praise to God. Uh, we, we, we thank the Lord we, uh, for His goodness and grace in our lives. Therewith, bless we God, even the Father. And then, therewith, uh, curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. It makes no sense, does it? That's what happens whenever we allow uh, our hearts to become corrupted by the world. Remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Uh, to eat with unwashed hands doesn't defile the man. But what comes out of his mouth, that's what defiles the man. Because what comes from the mouth proceeds from the heart. That's what Jesus tells us. But the Bible says in verse number 10, out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, would you mark the statement here in verse number 10? The Bible says, my brethren, these things ought not so to be. It shouldn't be that way. You know, our, 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 we shouldn't go to church and worship the Lord and use great speech. And then as soon as we exit the church doors and someone cuts us off uh, going down the road on our way home, we cuss them out. That shouldn't be the case. Uh, we uh, our, our mouths ought to be indicative of Christ in our lives, both at church and at home, both at home and at work, uh, at work and at play. In every facet of life, we are to worship God. Not, we don't just worship God uh, when we come to church. We worship God every moment of every day. We worship God throughout the day, over the course of day. And uh, everything that we do, we do out of worship. An act of worship, uh, not just singing. You know, so oftentimes we uh, we have really muddied the waters when it comes to what worship is. Uh, you know, we think that worship is a rock band on a stage with smoke machines and and strobe lights and a dark atmosphere. It's not worship. Now, the Bible says we worship God in spirit and in truth, according to John chapter number four. And uh, our worship must always align with the Word of God. Therefore, if we are worshiping God with our lives. Our lives must always align themselves with the Word of God. Again, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Uh, we, we are to worship God and, and be a blessing to others, right? Uh, look, look here again in verse number 11. It says, Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? You know, if you go out and uh, you, you dig a hole, you dig a well out, 
out in the country somewhere, um, you're, you're only going to get one kind of water. Either the water will be sweet or it will be bitter. It will be good for drinking or it will be bad for drinking. You know, you go to the ocean, right? And uh, that's a, it's a pretty big well. Uh, it's, it's, it's salt water. You can't drink that. Um, I know there are some exceptions where you find brackish water and, and pockets of fresh water at the, uh, at the mouths of a river. But we're talking overwhelmingly. You go to an ocean, you can't drink the water. It'll, it'll make you sick. And the Bible goes on to say, and can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, um, either a vine figs, so can no fountain, notice that, no fountain, both yield salt water and fresh. So how do we, what do we do? We've got to treat the well. That's what we have to do. We have to treat the well. Um, there's a term that, uh, that, that builders will use. It's called shock the well, where you dump chlorine in the well. And what does that do? It acts as a cleansing agent. It rids it of bacteria, any carcinogen, uh, anything that, that is detrimental to your physical health. And as we consider the, the well of our heart, the spring of our heart, the fountain of our heart, we must shock our hearts. Uh, as David prayed in Psalm 51, he said, Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. So if I'm going to if I'm going to bless God and bless men, uh, I need my heart to be right. My heart must always be right. I don't want to just uh, say the right things at church and then behave differently every other uh, every other day of the week. I want my I want my heart to be consistent. I want it to be consistently good. Don't you want your heart to be consistently good? Uh, hold turn turn if you would please to the book of Romans, Romans chapter number twelve. A very popular, uh, popular verse here. Romans chapter 12, in verse number 2, the Bible says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What God's will is for you is to bless Him and bless others. We don't want to curse God and curse man. Uh, out of the abundance of the heart and the mouth speaketh, so therefore we got to shock the heart. And get the, get the Word of God in your heart, friends. Read the Word of God. Meditate upon the Word of God. Memorize the Word of God. Share the Word of God. Let the Word of God shock your heart and get it back uh, to a clean, pure, pristine state. Uh, to, a, to Into the fashion of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Think of all the, thing, all the great examples in God's Word is that of the Lord. He never cursed man. He may have corrected man, but he never cursed man. In fact, he died for man. He died for you and for me on that cross, was buried and rose in victory from the grave so that you and I can have eternal life. And at the moment of salvation, the Holy Spirit of God comes to live within us and we have a new heart. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But we live in a sin-cursed world and we must constantly be uh, cleaning and maintaining a right heart attitude. And may God help us in this matter of our tongues. Everybody struggles with it. And we're not making excuses here today, but everybody needs help. We all need to better honor God with our mouths. Consider that fountain today. May God help us keep our, keep our hearts clean. If we look back in James chapter 3 as we close, just a reminder. The Bible says in verse number 10, My brethren, these things ought not so to be. How can we prevent filthy communication? By allowing the Word of God to dwell in our hearts richly. May God help us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Word of God. And Lord, we confess our need for it in our daily lives. Help us spend quality time in the Word of God. And may your Word transform us, transform our hearts, uh, clean our hearts and cause us to live lives that are wonderful examples of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us not to bless God and curse men. Help there not be found any sweet water and bitter water in the fountains of our heart. But Lord, may it always be sweet. Uh, again, 
May our speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. Lord, may it be always be beneficial, helpful, and healthful. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us today. As always, we love you and we're praying for you. If there's anything the church or I can do to be a blessing to you, please do not hesitate to call us at 614-382-0585 or you can email us at info at pickeringtonbaptisttemple.org. May God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.